All right, so this episode is going to be something um, that is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, I like to call it the hypermedia hot reload. So, you know, there's a lot of sort of fancy setups you can do um, to do hot reloading. Um, but what I use is, and I like to think of it as the OG, you know, this is like a shout out to the OG hypermedia hot reload, is the head tag um, of meta HTTP dash equiv equals refresh uh, content equals five. So this is the code that you've probably seen a bunch of times and it's just put up at the top of the website. All it's doing is repeatedly refreshing your page, you know, over and over again. Um, and, you know, nobody knows exactly what the HTTP dash equiv, like where did this syntax come from? Why is this there? Doesn't really matter. The point is it's there to refresh your page in an old school way. Just refresh, refresh, refresh. And this used to be really annoying um, because a refresh causes that, you know, everything goes white, the page comes back in again. Um, but that's not really the case anymore. And and we've I've sort of talked with a couple people here, um, you know, with Anthony Alaribe about some of the myths uh, with web development in general. And one of them is that like the white paint, you know, where it's it when you go to a new page, first you get the blank white and then it processes everything and then eventually you get that. That's not true anymore um, on most browsers. I'm sure there's some out there where that's still true. Uh, but that's not true anymore, which means when you refresh, that's also not true. You're not getting that blank thing anymore. Um, so what are the, realistically, when do you use this? So I'm talking about for development. This is like hot reloading for the purpose of development. Um, so as I'm working on something, I will put that tag up at the top and it's just refreshing that page over and over again. Why would you do that? You know, why... You can always just, you know, go over to the page and, and hit refresh. But I like to do like split screen, you know, side by side. You've got your code. And this is only when I'm really working on design, I should say. You know, when you're designing, laying things out, um, I like to see what's happening as I do it. So I just like save in my code and then refreshed on some schedule uh, over on the right hand side. Um, and the benefits of this. So first of all, like obviously you, you see your code right away. So you just like see them as you make them. If there's a five second delay, that's fine. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Um, it's supported in every browser. There's no setup. You know, you don't have to have, uh, you know, you can do kind of refreshing and hot reloading. There's plenty of ways to do it. Lots of different ecosystems have this. Um, generally, it's great if it's built into what you're doing already. Great. That's fine. But this is supported in every browser and in mobile. So if you are doing some mobile testing, you know, you can uh, put your your simulator, your iOS simulator up on the page, go to the thing and just it'll automatically be already working uh, to do your hot reload. So support it everywhere. There's no additional server. There's no node. Um, there's no environmental config necessary. Uh, so you just sort of don't need any other infrastructure to make it happen. This is why, like, I like to think of it as like, you know, hypermedia just kind of uh, built-in support for this kind of stuff. Um, so there's, besides the, the easiness of it, I think there's actually some benefits that make it better than some of the other hot reload options. Um, it helps you diagnose speed problems with your site. Um, so you will notice immediately if your site is starting to get slow and it's refreshing every five seconds and it takes a second or two each time, um, you're gonna feel that. You're gonna you're gonna notice like, okay, I've done something that's making this site slow. Uh, so I think there's a benefit to that. That's up to you whether that's okay with you, whether you want it. But it helps you diagnose it because it forces you to interact with it in a way that a user would go to the page over. You know, as the users are going to the page, if it's taking a long time just to refresh, it's gonna take a long time. Uh, the other thing is that it helps you diagnose uh, what people sometimes call jank, uh, J A N K. So when you refresh a page, there's content that might be loading in after, there's stuff that is on a CDN, there's stuff that is, um, you know, could just be from anywhere. Uh, and when it loads that page, it will sometimes shift stuff around, especially the CSS. You know, maybe the CSS comes in a little late. 
actually probably the, the most thing is a third party JavaScript library. So let's say you have like a, I don't know, select two, which slightly changes the height of a select. Um, now, every time you refresh, that select two is coming in a little bit later. After, so it lays out the page and then it runs all your JavaScript and then it's shifting the size of stuff. That could be through CSS or JavaScript. So I personally hate that. Like that's that's something I just am not okay with. Uh, is that little jank? I don't like to be at the bottom of a page and refresh, and it's like shifting and then shifting back. And it's just like I like to think of a web page when you go to it. The stuff I build, solid. It's just like a block. Uh, it's like a sheet of paper almost. Uh, maybe like a magazine because magazines are a little fancier looking. But I like to think of them as these really solid things. And I don't like it when stuff moves. And I call that jank. Other people call it jank. Um, so the hypermedia refresh, the HTTP equal equiv equals refresh, content equals five. If it's refreshing every five seconds and it's moving around like crazy, you're gonna just you're gonna be sick of it too. Um, so it helps you to diagnose that. So, you know, you can diagnose speed issues, but you can also diagnose the jank. There's a lot of stuff you can do. I got some some hot tips on how to uh, get rid of the jank after you find it, um, but I, I won't get into that now. But um, basically, this is going to force you to fix it. Uh, so if you use these anytime you're working on a page, particularly during design, um, I think you're going to be just better off. And the final thing is to remember to um, remove it at the end when you finished, because if you if you put out a page with that refresh on it, um, you're just going to piss people off.